Good morning, everybody. This is Carpo, and uh, welcome to my reality. <laughs> I've been making videos for about a year now, and I've covered a wide variety of subjects, but um, something I've never really tackled is relationships. You know, I talk about people and, and life in general, but um, I was just thinking about my subject for the video this morning, and it was about um, differences in people and learning to accept differences, learning to tolerate the little things that aren't really bothersome to you, but maybe aren't the way that you would do things. And um, what got me thinking about that was uh, it's Super Bowl Sunday today, you know. <clears throat> And I know that there are millions of men out there right now who are just up early, chomping at the bit, getting ready for the game, totally excited. There are folks who are out there who go out and buy televisions for today. There are people out there who spend thousands of dollars on Super Bowl parties for today. Because some people look forward to that. Now I could say, oh, well that's just stupid, it's football. But I, I don't, because I understand that it's part of our culture, it's part of some people's culture, um, if you want to call it culture. I've never really been a big sports fan, I've never really, I've always been interested in competition. I've always found sports fascinating, but I've never been interested in um, the money-making garbage that they became. But that's my opinion, and I know that there's a lot of uh, guys out there who love football. And I was thinking, gosh, there's a huge difference between me and guys who like football. My wife, for example, um, she says, you know, she's like, she's glad I don't, I'm not obsessed with, with sports, you know. There are a lot of guys out there, that's all they think about. And um, I kind of philosophy is my sport, you know. That's what I do. That's what I am interested in. Um, my sports heroes are philosophy heroes, you know. And uh, my game is the life game. That's the game I choose to be interested in. And um, I don't like to consider myself better or worse because of that. And I know a lot of people think they're superior because they study um, knowledge and history and, and they look at other people and say, look at you, you're just sheep, you're just ignorant, you have no idea, no desire for knowledge. But those people can be a little pushy. And um, knowledge is not for everyone, you know. Ide the, the way I think is not for everyone. Now. <clears throat> that's the way I like it. Now, this is how we share information, this is how we gain knowledge from one another, is that we each have our own little, you know, section. For example, if I went to a football game, let's say I found interest in it and decided to go, I could talk to one of the people there and ask them what's going on, like a friend or something who knows football. They'd be able to explain to me what's going on, because they've spent their time to learn about the game. Not that I would, but if I chose to. Now, if this person was out with me and we were out in nature and looking around at trees, I could maybe tell them what a couple trees were or explain, um, you know, some deep thoughts that I've learned about the mind or whatnot, if they were interested at all, which they probably wouldn't be. But I'm just giving an example of different things that we can share with each other. But I really wanted to get to relationships because I think that I was thinking of all the women out there who today, their men expect them to make them meals that women who basically become servants for the for the football game and that's not always a bad thing a lot of women enjoy that they want to help their husbands they want to you know they they might look forward to it as well you know they could they can make you know that the day that their husband is uh you know happiest he's into the game whatever i don't really know the inner situations of each household i have no idea but i know that there are certain um uh certain relationships where the man is really into football or some sport and the woman has no desire for it at all. You know, I made a video yesterday about how when one person gets into something, it tends to kind of just, another person gets sucked into it if they're close to them. And that happens with sports quite often, you know. Um, a couple will get married and the man's really into football and so the woman takes on the interest in football just to, you know, appease her husband. And there's nothing wrong with that either. You know, I, I think that that's great because, you know, it takes dedication, it takes effort to make a relationship work. And, um, but on the other hand, there are those out there who seem to think that they can change people. Those who seem to think that, that if they get into a relationship with someone, that they can convert them to thinking their way. And rather than telling the person, hey, I'm not going to be able to, you know, 
have a relationship with you unless you can at least see my point of view a little bit. They just kind of slide into it and hope the other person changes. I've seen this a lot. A good example is a relationship where someone takes on a, um, you know, meets someone and, and, and they take on a relationship based on um, sex and nothing else. And maybe one person's a Christian and the other's an atheist or, you know, completely different religious beliefs. But they have a good, strong sexual relationship, so they make it, try to make it work. Any relationship based on sex will fail, eventually. It has to have more than that. But um, if you want it to be a real relationship, you know, an intimate relationship is fine. But in order to have a functioning couple, you have to understand each other on a different level. My wife probably puts up with more shit than I can imagine, but from me, but um, she's a great woman, you know. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I know each couple has their own little way of dealing with things. We don't fight. We don't argue. We've probably had three arguments, major arguments, since we've been together. And I met her in 1998. And, um... So we've been together 16 years this year, but we got married two years ago. So we were together for 14 years before we got married, and, um, you know, talk about getting to know somebody before you marry them. <laughs> but uh, we have so many similarities, but so many differences, and I think that's what makes it great, you know. It's just sad to me to see other people... Um, fighting about things that aren't even the issue. People, couples, will get into an argument about something so mundane, and really they're just pushing their own discomfort with each other, and they're putting it out there in something visible that they can see. You did this, or you did that, but really that's not the issue. One good example is, oh, you keep leaving, you left the towel on the floor, or, you know, you left a dirty dish in the sink, <laughs> or, um, you know, you're supposed to vacuum. Really, some of the times these issues are bigger, deeper, and um, so if you can look at a relationship that way between a, a couple, and look at the way that the world relationship works. Look at look around you at the same thing being pushed on friends and families. Um, a person doesn't think the way another person does. Let me. I give you a good example. Uh, kind of sum up what I'm saying here is, if a couple. A, a couple who has been together, who has spent the majority of their life together, cannot even bend their will for one another in order to have a successful relationship. How are we going to expect humanity in general to bend their will to the world around them? And, and, and that's kind of my metaphor, is just seeing that if a person can't even dedicate a little bit of change into a relationship that's going to last their entire life, why should they change their relationship with those around them they don't even know? And um, that's a really sad way of thinking about it, but it's the way I see it. I think that um, people, even those who say they're willing to change, find resistance to change if it interferes with their way of living. But um, we all do it. I do it. And therefore, I know people do it. I'm not the only one. We all want to make our lives work the way we want them to work. But um, sometimes it takes a little bit of effort. Sometimes it takes a lot. <laughs> so, I hope everyone has a great Sunday. And if you're watching Super Bowl, then right on, if that's your thing. And um, if, you're, uh, if you're not, like me, then you can... Uh, Enjoy a nice day with the family, and maybe go for a drive before the drunkards hit the road. Hmm. Whatever. Hope you enjoy. Have a good day.